सर्वधर्मस्थापकत्व सर्वधर्मस्वूप आचार्याण महाचार्यो रामकृष्णा के नम ओ एस्टाब्लिशर ऑफ ऑल द फेथ्स एम्बॉडिमेंट ऑफ ऑल द रिलीजन्स द ग्रेटेस्ट टीचर अमंग ऑल द टीचर्स ओ श्री रामकृष्ण माय सैल्यूटेशन टू श्री रामकृष्ण टॉकिंग टू श्री महेंद्रनाथ गुप्ता इट इज ए वन टू वन पर्सनल डिस्कशन बिटवीन द गुरु एंड द शिष्य बिटवीन द टीचर एंड द डिसाइपल एंड ऑन दिस डे ऑफ ट्वेंटी फोर्थ ऑगस्ट एटीन एटी टू Sri Ramakrishna is uh, giving uh, very, very significant teachings to Sri M, which he has wholeheartedly recorded in his diary, and then brought out in the form of the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, so that the teachings can be shared with all the future generations. And today we sitting here hundreds of years after that talk. between sri ramakrishna and him and subsequent uh, conversation subsequent teachings we have been uh, fortunate enough to get sri ramakrishna's teachings through sri m's writing in the gospel of sri ramakrishna so uh, the topic that day uh, sri ramakrishna was teaching sri m was about trading this path of god realization and sri ramakrishna says this path has two very significant obstacles very dangerous obstacles the obstacles of lust and greed shri ramakrishna time and again he talks about kamini kanchan the woman and gold kamini is woman kanchan is gold but that doesn't mean that shri ramakrishna belittles womanhood he uses the word kamini to denote kama the lustful tendencies the tendencies of sensual pleasures fulfilling the sensual pleasures that is kama and that kama shri ramakrishna is using the word kamini kamini kanchan the lust and greed these are the two major obstacles on this path shri ramakrishna says and he also gives us how to get rid of these obstacles how to handle these obstacles how to handle these most dangerous uh, you know enemies on this path so shri ramakrishna says like the helpsman of the boat when he is taking this boat in the rough waters what does helpsman do he catches hold of the rudder very firmly and does not allow the boat to sink or go haywire or against the current he holds the rudder so firmly that he is able to manage it manage all these obstacles whether it is a storm whether it is a high winds there is whether it is a high tide or the curves and bends of the river he maneuvers beautifully after taking hold of the rudder of the boat and then sri ramakrishna says when all these obstacles have calmed down when the all these problems have been taken care of then the whole uh, the helps man even sits quietly in complete peace and is now prepared to enjoy his smoke now he is not worried that my boat will sink or my boat will go here and there now he knows that his boat is on the right course and now he is in a relaxed mood so shri ramakrishna tells this and then he says even the greatest of the yogis at times they are at this risk of getting tempted by the illusions and delusions of lust and greed so be careful this is this is the caution of sri ramakrishna is time and again giving to his devotees so having uh, uh, told uh, sri m about that now sri m has lots of questions about trading this path of god realization and also at the same time doing the duties now he is a householder he is not a uh, all renouncing sanyasi having given up everything and gone to himalayas and sitting in a cave and just meditating on the ultimate uh, brahman no he has to be in this uh, world he has to earn money he has to do duties and therefore he asks uh, shri ram krishna that uh, uh, the, uh, how how long we should do these duties uh, shri ram krishna says perform your duties in an unselfish spirit 
like uh, what uh, Sri Krishna has told us in the Bhagavad Gita. Don't attach any desires to what you are doing. Don't keep the fruits of your work in as your objective. Just completing the work as your objective. Fruit, whatever you get, take it. Perform your duties in an unselfish spirit. And he says, always try to perform duties without desiring any result. So this is what uh, Sri Ramakrishna tells M. And then Sri uh, M again asks that, but uh, uh, sir, that it, I have read that Rama and desire, and desire in a sense, uh, desire to work, they can't go together. Sri Ramakrishna says, no, 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 nothing with like this. Perform work. You can trade the path of God realization while performing work. And Sri Ramakrishna says, for that matter, even a great uh, uh, aspirant, he can never be without any work. He says, a devotee is always constantly engaged in doing work. Whether you are doing chanting the name of God, where you whether you are singing the glories of God, where do you are doing whether you are worshipping the deity, you are doing japa, all these things they are work. And he says, for that matter, even a non-dualist for that matter, he who is constantly meditating upon the formless God, upon constantly repeating soham, soham, I am he, I am he. Even that is the work, no, he is doing work. And then for that matter, Sri Ramakrishna makes one thing very clear, that as long as the body is alive, there is a constant work going on within the body itself. All the physiological activities that are going on in the body, we are unconscious of it, but we are doing it. We are breathing, Sri Ramakrishna says, even breathing is work. So you cannot avoid work. But one thing for sure, God will lessen down your worldly duties. Like he gave that example of the pregnant woman as she advances uh, in the pregnancy. The, her household works, automatically they start coming down. And then post delivery, it is only the mother and the child, mother and the baby and no more work. Likewise, Sri Ramakrishna says, work will be there, but the worldly duties, will they will keep on tapering, they will keep on lessening. Then Sri M asks him that, uh, is it uh, okay to earn money? Sri Ramakrishna says, of course, you need money to run your family. You can even uh, uh, try to increase your income. But Sri Ramakrishna says, do it in an honest way. Do it honestly. And how much money after all you require? You require money to feed your family, to get them proper clothes, and whatever excess is there, put it in the service of the God. Don't do extravagant spending unnecessarily, unnecessary spendings. So use it for the service of the God, service of the uh, holy people, service of people like you who are trading this path of spirituality. And uh, uh, Sri M again then asks that uh, how, how long one has to do these worldly duties? Sri Ramakrishna says, the blossom drops off on itself when the fruit appears. So you don't worry about it. It is the natural process. The moment your fruit of spirituality appears, all these worldly duties will drop off. One doesn't have to do one's duty after attainment of God, Sri Ramakrishna says. Nor does one feel like doing it anymore. So God reduces the burden of the worldly duties. Then your spiritual duties take on. Then your austerities take on. Your japa, your meditation, your singing the glories of the God, all these things, they will be on an increasing scale. And your engagement in the worldly duties will get lessened. So Sri Ramakrishna says, finish a few duties you have at hand and then you will have peace. If you are not completing your duties, you will not have peace. You will be absolutely agitated. Because you were supposed to do them and you have not done, you have not done them, that will bring kind of a, a, you know uh, 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 uneasiness. 
in your mind. You won't be at peace at all. And then uh, uh, Sri M has another doubt that, the, sir, what is the meaning of realization of God? Now, Sri Ramakrishna is always telling his uh, uh, disciples, his devotees, that the purpose of human life is realization of God. That is the ultimate. All these are secondary issues. You living your worldly life, you are doing, doing your duties, earning money, running the family. Or if you are on the phase of renunciation, renouncing the worldly life into a monkhood, into a nunhood. But still, duties are there. So, duties will be there, but your aim should be God-realization. So, Sri M asks that, what is the meaning of this God-realization? And how does one attain? What can one do to attain this God-realization? And then Sri Ramakrishna tells him uh, about the Vaishnava uh, 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 tradition in which they have demarcated the spiritual aspirants who lead the path of God-realization. He says, according to Vaishnava tradition, the aspirants and seers of God are classified in four parts. Like Sri Ramakrishna told us about uh, four types of jivas, even the, 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 the Baddha Jiva, the Mumukshu, the Nitya and the Mukta. Now, here Sri Ramakrishna is talking about the Mumukshu, those who have taken the path of seeking the God, seeking God realization. Now, he says, as per the Vaishnava tradition, even these Mumukshus are of the four types. They can be the lower level to the highest level. From the Mumukshu, ordinary Mumukshu, ordinary seeker of God to the person who has had the ultimate realization of God. So, Sri Ramakrishna says, there are four types. Now, which are these four types? He explains them very beautifully. Sri Ramakrishna says, the first is Pravartaka. Pravartaka is one who has just started the journey. You have just come to the bus stop, awaiting for the bus, and he is about to uh, start the journey towards God realization. He is a Pravartaka. The second is Sadhaka. Now the real seeker, the Mumukshu, hmm? he starts the austerities. He starts doing Japa. He starts doing worshipping uh, the God. He starts singing praises of God, singing glories of God. He gets into that mode of performing austerities. The Pravartaka is not into austerity phase at all. He has just initiated. He is very curious about this end result, this goal of God-realization. That curiosity has taken that person onto this path. That is Pravartaka. Then second is Sadhaka. Now the journey starts. Now he starts performing various austerities. Then is the Siddha. He is called, Siddh, uh, he is called Sadhaka who has for some time been practicing spiritual disciplines, these austerities. Worship, Japa, meditation, chanting of God's name and his glories. So, he is at the second phase. The third phase on this process is Siddha. Siddha is one who has got some idea of what is God. He has got some idea. Though he is far away from knowing the God, but he has got some idea. Okay, this is this is the one, this is the one. And for that, Sri Ramakrishna has given a very beautiful example. Suppose a person has come to uh, uh, the house of a master and he wants to know uh, uh, the master. Somebody tells him, oh, master is sitting in the room inside. Go and find yourself. This person enters the room and he starts, there it's totally dark inside. So he touches the door is it master? No, no, no. This, this doesn't appear to be master. Then he goes, uh, touches a window. Is this master? No, 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 no. This doesn't appear to be master. Master must be some human uh, uh, like figure, isn't it? So, door is not a master. The window is not a master. And he keeps on touching different objects. And every time it is 
no, this is not a master. Neti, neti, neti process. Like that jnani who has climbed the stairs. With every step he says, no, neti, this is not roof. This is not roof. This is not roof. And then finally, he touches the body of a person lying on a cot. And then he says, oh, this is the master. But he only has got the idea of, okay, this person is lying there on the bed. He is the master of the house. But who is he? How does it look? How he, does he look like? How does he speak? What will be his attitude when he see me? How will he behave with me? All these things are unknown to him. He has only known that, yes, master is there. So Sri Ramakrishna says, he is like a Siddha. And the fourth stage is Siddha of the Siddha. That one who has uh, intimately known the God. He who, he who has got the real knowledge. He who has got the Vidnana of what Sri Ramakrishna had spoken about difference between the Jnani and the Vidnani. Vidnana is a step and then Jnani. Now here Siddha will be like a Jnani, but Siddha of Siddhas, the topmost category, the elite category of the people who are treading the path of uh, uh, God realization. The Siddha of the Siddha is like that Vidnani. She knows everything. Then the person switches on the uh, light, light switch he finds and then he sees the master in person. He talks to him. He talks to him intimately. He gets to know about the master intimately. So that is the ultimate God realization. So that is how Sri Ramakrishna beautifully explains through this uh, particular example the different paths of spiritual aspirants, different paths, different stages that the mukshus, they undergo on their path of seeking the realization, of seeking the God. So, uh, <coughs> they, they, with, with this talk, uh, with, with this example, we will uh, close our uh, talk today. And in the next talk, again, Sri Ramakrishna is going to tell us about the kind of uh, approaches that uh, we can take on this particular route. On this particular route of knowing the master. Now we have found the master. Now we have found the master. Now we can know him much better. Now what are the different ways of knowing the master much better? That Sri Ramakrishna will teach us in our next meeting. Till then, Om Namah Shri Bhagavate Ramakrishnaya. Sri Ramakrishnar Panamastu. Jai Thakur, Jai Ma. Jai Swamiji.